Start with the spectrometer base and we're going to install the two slits. Uh, so the light is going to pass into these two entrance apertures here. Um, and these two slots will accommodate these two slits. So you grab both of your slits and you're going to orient them. You can see that they're slightly asymmetric. So orient them in this manner with the slit towards the bottom. And it's probably best you can see that one side has an indentation, the other side does not. Uh, it's not super critical which way you orient it, but you want both to be consistent. So if you choose this direction, um, then do that for both slits. So take and insert that into the first slot there. And they're going to be a little sticky, um, so you're going to want to keep pushing down pretty hard until you see very clearly that the slit is centered in the aperture. So that's what we're looking for, is something that looks like that. We want both slits to be identical, so I'm going to grab the other one, I'm going to orient it the same direction, so that means the indentation is facing backward, slit side down, I'm going to keep inserting until I see a matching pair of slits like that. Second step here is to affix the mirror inside of the cavity of the base plate. So the mirror is actually going to go right here on this 45 degree ledge. So if you imagine the light passes in through the aperture, through the slit, you'll have two cuvettes here. So the light will pass directly through the cuvettes. It will then proceed to hit a mirror at 45 degrees and then that light will be reflected in this direction vertically uh, where your camera will sit. That's going to serve as the actual spectrometer sensor in this case. So we need to prep the mirror in that case so you'll have a mirror like this in one of your kits. Um, this is a good time to um, grab your gloves. Uh, your mirrors might not be completely clean. We don't want to leave any fingerprints on them so we're going to clean them after we do this assembly. Um, and so leaving fingerprints it can be remedied by just wearing a set of gloves. I don't have any on me right now, but uh, go ahead and throw your gloves on at this point. Flip the mirror over, um, and then you should have a sheet of these glue dots here. These glue dots are essentially double-sided tape, uh, or replacements of. They're a little bit easier to use than double-sided tape. Um, there's a top sheet and this backer sheet, this waxy paper. So um, you're going to need two of these dots. It doesn't matter which ones you grab. So as you peel the top sheet off of the, the waxy stuff, this is the dot itself. So you're going to sort of grab these. Um, it takes a little bit of effort to sort of de-stick it. And so you have it like that. And then you're going to go ahead and affix it just to the top corner of the mirror, like that. And we'll do the same thing for the second one. So I'll grab the second one like that and then I'll go ahead and pop that down here on the second corner. So you'll be left with something that looks like that. At this point go ahead and grab, um, make sure you're handling the mirror on the sides even with gloves, and go ahead and grab uh, one of the included Kim wipes here and um, polish this mirror up as best you can. If you have a bunch of smeared or smudges there that you can't remove because there's um, oil from your fingers or hands, you can um, use a little bit of soapy water to clean that up. You just don't want any big giant um, chunks of anything because that will scatter the light. So once you have that, then you're going to grab the spec base again and you're going to rotate this thing. It's only going to fit one way. There's a, th there's a thin dimension, which is dimension here, and then there's a thick dimension, which is this. You want to orient the thin dimension uh, so that it slips in this way. Uh, these were sort of pre-cut before being sent to you. So I like to hold the base like this so that this 45 degree um, platform here is essentially flat instead of like this so it doesn't slide down. We don't want the mirror to go all the way to the bottom so this is sort of a tricky step. Uh, you can go ahead and rest the mirror in there like this. So at this point, as long as I'm leaving it flat, it's just going to stay there. And I'm going to slowly and carefully just insert that. And I'm going to insert it so that it's roughly 5 millimeters or so from the edge. Maybe a little bit more than that. Um, 
I'm going to insert this piece later, and so I want to make sure if I insert this piece with this thickness that there's enough of a lip here or room for that to be accommodated. So that's really what you're trying to accommodate. So push it in a little bit like that. And then once you've got it in there, you can take your Kim wipe or your gloved hand and go ahead and push down to secure the mirror in place since it's that sticky uh, glue dot holding it in place. And now you can see this thing is good to go. Next step here is to insert the diffraction grating. So this um, thin transparent piece of material uh, that will come pre-glued on the insert here, the blue insert that I'm holding, uh, this is similar to spectro spectrograph glasses you might have worn before where uh, if you put the glasses on your face um, all of the light and reflection of light around you gets broken out into um, into a colored spectrum of light. So we're going to leverage that specifically in this case to take whatever the white light is that's inserting into our sample, into our cuvettes, and then we're going to split or disperse that white light through this grating onto the camera uh, sensor in your phone. So this, in this case, this is essentially acting as our monochromator or a prism. Um, it's essentially serving the, the, the purpose of, of those tools in a conventional spectrometer. So you can see the way that this fits. There's a couple notches here up in the top left and right, and then there's a really flat side. This flat side is going to be out towards you this non-flat side where you'll have the glued piece of um, diffraction grating that goes in towards the mirror so we're just going to go ahead and line that up like this and then carefully push that in the the degree of tightness here will depend uh, on the kit that you get. Some will be really loose and some will be a little bit tighter like the one I'm showing you here. doesn't matter. I've just printed them uh, in differing scales uh, just to, to experiment with these things. Uh, okay, so now we have uh, the entire spectrometer assembled. The last sort of two steps, and I'll just demonstrate, uh, is the installation of your cuvettes, which are removable, of course. So those would be housed here. You can see that um, there is some embedded writing here. This would be where your sample is. This is where the blank is. It doesn't really matter. You just need to know when you're processing your images where that is. So um, the last piece that you're, that's included with your spectrometer kit is this cap. Uh, it may look like this or slightly different for you depending on which print job you get. So this cap is not um, perfect, but it slips over the top like that. Um, it can pretty easily fall off. So um, the whole purpose here is just to block whatever light is coming in from up here. It provides a darker background for the image that gets formed on your camera. So this is really the assembled object. Um, now we just need a light source and we need our camera which serves as the sensor. Next we need to add the light source to our spectrometer. So there, you're actually equipped with two different light sources and we're going to use both in the assembly here. The main light source that you're going to use is this incandescent bulb which um, provides light, what we consider white light or polychromatic light. Um, because there's a small tungsten filament inside of here. If we pass a large enough current, it heats up, and the heat alone of that tungsten filament can cause emission of light um, of many wavelengths over a broad spectrum. So this is sort of our, our broadband source of light that we'll use. Um, but as you'll see in the protocol, um, when we shine this light onto our camera sensor, uh, the camera sensor itself doesn't intrinsically know what wavelength of light is being shined. It just sees specific colors and it records that. In order to calibrate the specific wavelengths of light that we're shining on our sample, we need to use something we know the, the actual wavelength. So we're going to use a compact fluorescent bulb like this. So you're also shipped with one of these. So um, you'll have these two light sources. We're going to start with the incandescent bulb um, right now. So go ahead and take your lamp. Um, it's probably best if you start with this unplugged to begin with. And insert this into the socket. 
very gently. This is a really thin piece of glass if you've never screwed in a light bulb. Um, be careful because squeezing this too hard can cause this to break. Uh, that also goes for being careful not to drop this or allow anything to touch this because it will rupture pretty quickly. Um, so that is uh, the assembly of our, our uh, initial broadband or incandescent light source. Um, you may have one of these included with you, um, if not in your kits, if not, go ahead and just um, try to find some sort of object that's going to be able to, to roughly support this uh, lamp so that it sits up vertically like this uh, so that it can shine light pretty directly. A uh, piece of cardboard, um, really anything that you have, just make sure that the object is only touching this ceramic base. The ceramic base um, doesn't get hot, whereas this uh, does get hot. You want to keep this bulb off when you're not using it. This is a 70 watt bulb, um, and that means it's emitting quite a bit of heat. So the bulb itself will get really hot, and everything adjacent to it will get hot. You'll feel the heat that's emanating from this bulb, so keep it off unless you're going to use it. So to turn on your illumination source at this point, you would just flip this switch and you can turn it on like that. You're going to probably want to start with your spectrometer roughly two to three inches away from the light source, though that's going to somewhat depend on your exact phone. Uh, so whatever produces the best spectral image in your particular phone sensor, that's where you're going to want to position this. I've found for the couple phones that I've used in this, two to three inches is a pretty good start. I'm going to turn this off for now. All right, next step here is to install our sensor. Uh, this is actually the spectrograph itself. This is what's going to collect the data onto our spectrometer here. Every phone is different, so sort of the key is to ensure that the camera, wherever your camera is located on your phone, every phone is different, that camera needs to be more or less centered within the diffraction grading element here. How do you know that to be uh, centered? Well, I find the easiest way to do that is actually to have your light source on. So we're going to turn this lamp on, and then we're going to um, actually hold our phone on top and try to get close to center so just line up your your camera with close to center of this diffraction grating uh, while you're in the camera mode so you'll have this on video uh, actually it doesn't matter it can be on camera mode too uh, and so you'll be recording that in real time and moving that in XY space until you sort of get the best spectrum that is most resolved, it's brightest, and you see two of them, one for each of the cuvettes. Um, you're going to need a couple other pieces of equipment for this alignment. Uh, it'll be helpful if you have either a pencil um, or a, a thick permanent marker so that as we're aligning this you can make a couple marks and then once we know where the phone should be to give you the optimum spectrum then we're going to flip this over and grab uh, the two pieces of Velcro that are included with your kit. So there's the sort of rough, coarse one, and then there's the softer one. The the uh, coarse one will get installed here. There's just double-sided tape to this. Um, the tape shouldn't leave any residue on your phone or on your case. You may have to wipe it off with a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol later, um, but probably not. So you'll install here, and once we have our marks here, what we can do is actually take uh, the other side and we'll lay this on top. We'll remove the double-sided tape from this side, and then we'll take our whole assembly here, line it up with our marks, and push it against the base, and that'll secure it in position, but it'll also allow us to remove the phone later so you can use your phone, it doesn't have to remain affixed to this. So let me walk you through those steps. Go ahead and turn the lamp on and make sure you have a marker. Uh, marker is easier. Uh, we may include one with the kit, otherwise a pencil will do. Have it a couple inches away. Make sure you have the cap on, on the top, and make sure you have this uh, diffraction grating installed. Set your camera, uh, turn your camera on, so that it's in camera mode, and then we'll be ready to test fix this. 
Okay, so different angle here. Um, what you're going to do is take your phone in camera mode, and you can see my camera's on, so I'm actually looking as I'm adding it down, and you can start to see the actual rainbows there. Those are the diffraction patterns of the white light. And so I'm lowering that on. I'm on the base now. What you're looking for here in alignment is you need two distinct um, bands. You actually see four here. That's fine. You have one on the left, one on the right. Those are the left and right cuvettes, and the others are just reflections of those. So you need at least two. You can see if I move this, it goes away. If I move the other direction, uh, it might get a little better for a bit, and then you start to lose it. Um, you can see if I move up, I start to lose it, and if I move down, I start to lose it. So you're looking for that spectrum to be two and to have them centered. Um, you may need to click, depending on how your phone works, to focus exactly on that spectrum. That's what I'm doing here. It's okay if it's not right in the dead center of the phone, you just need it in the field of view of the phone. Once you have what looks good, and this is what looks good, I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to sort of make some marks at the top and on the edge so I know where to replace my phone when I put the Velcro on. Okay, so go ahead and uh, put your Velcro together first and then have the side um, that is the coarse side, so that's in my right hand here, that's the side that's going to go against your phone, and then the, the, uh, the less coarse side is what is going to go against the spectrometer base itself. So what I'm going to do is um, take and peel off the coarse side and expose the glue. I'm going to find a good place on my phone in the center. It doesn't matter exactly where. Um, I'm going to just put it right here, right in the center, and push that down nice and good there. And you can leave this on for now, but then what you're going to do here, then you want to remove the double-sided tape from the other side. So go ahead and peel that off of there. And make sure you're in camera mode again. And so I'm going to then come down onto my base here, and I'm going to line up exactly where I had sketched this out before. You should be able to see that too on your camera. I'm going to focus that again. Something like that. And then go ahead and press down to secure your device view that you're looking for uh, once you secure your device. So you've got the spectrum from the left cuvette here and the spectrum from the right cuvette here. You can tell this because if you put your finger, if you take your finger and actually block one of the apertures where the light's coming in, I can block the left aperture like that. I can block both apertures like that or I can pull them back out. So at this point I can come in here and press capture and every time I do that, I'm collecting a spectrum.